welcome to the Jeremy Hill Show. If you're easily triggered, leave now because this is not the show for you. Now, what I want to say to y'all in my most humble opinion, I personally believe that black women have destroyed dating. Black women, today's modern day black women, in my most humble opinion, has ruined the dating scene. And I'm going to attempt to prove what I believe. You make your own decision about it. I'm going to be using these clips out of fair use because this is an educational video educating you about how people mess up the dating scene. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started into this. One second, ladies and gentlemen, as I pull it up. If you're afraid to court me or take me out on a $300 date because you feel like that's going to make you seem like you're tap dancing for me. Now this lady says now, if you're going to date her, be prepared to spend $300. That's on the first date, second date, and may even go higher on the third date. And if you do that, you don't want to do it because you might think that you're doing tap dancing for her. In other words, she's trying to say that you think you're doing too much for her beauty, her glorious, I am the prize personality. $300 is insane. That's just insane. It's going to make you seem like you're tap dancing for me then just leave me alone no problem i will leave you alone i will act like i never seen you before now i don't know i guess it depends on the state or the city that you're from but on average man if you go on a date if you're actually spending on some meal you might spend about anywhere from 50 or 60 dollars at the most where i'm in, in over here in houston or whatever in this texas place it might be more where you at because of how things are where you at i don't know but 300 dollars I think that's too much in any city, in any state to spend on a woman that is not your wife. Do you get what I'm saying? But this is why I say women have ruined the dating scene because of their sense of entitlement. These women right here are selfish. They don't care about if they put financial strain on you as long as you pay for what they want you to pay for. They don't love you. They don't like you. And if you ever go on a date with a woman who thinks like this, you will continuously find yourself digging in your pockets trying to please this woman because all she cares about is your money. She's not there just to know you. She wants you to spend on her. That's it. Because I can honestly take myself out on a $300 date. I don't need you to do it. I'm, we're both doing it to see if there's something there. I give us an actual connection. If you can't even put up the money or the time or the effort to make it like a real date then just leave me alone in case you didn't know ladies and gentlemen according to her a real date starts at three hundred dollars <laughs> boy these women are some fools out here i got some more clips for you one second this is a short clip, but it makes a good point. Let me go ahead and play it for you. I have to turn it. Uh, yeah, I'll play it right now. I'm not a dinner and a movie chick. I'm sorry. Okay. That's not a date to me. That's a family outing. What is your That's idea That's a social of a gathering. Okay. What would impress you? I need an experience. This woman said, I'm going to back and do it one more time. I'm not a dinner and a movie chick. I'm sorry. Okay. That's not a date to me. That's a family outing. What is your That's idea That's a social of a first gathering. Okay. What would impress you? I need an experience. That woman said that a dinner in a movie is not a date to her. That's a social outing. That's a family outing. She wants you to give her an experience. Now, I'm not talking about bowling and stuff like that. That would probably be beneath her too. She wants you to go climb the highest mountain and do the most extravagant stuff for her to be considered a date. So, of course, it's going to be over two, $300 as well because... <laughs> Women used to complain about men not taking them out to eat or being gentlemen. Now they complain about them doing it, and it still ain't enough. Now, some of you will say you're just complaining because you ain't got no money. Now, I'm finna put up a famous athlete who says he wouldn't do that either. I can't remember his name exactly. His name is Chad. For you um, sports fanatics, you probably recognize him. Let's go ahead and play it. What is? What is a good amount of money? to spend on the first date. A lot of girls feel like I gotta spend a minimum $300 to be with them. I'm like, 300 what? 
dollars. American dollars? Dollars. <laughs> Please. <laughs> on who? On the first date? Yo, Chad. For what? You're considered a high value man. So, I ladies, this is for this. You got money? Well, I think high value is based on stream of income, revenue, but I am extremely cheap and financially conscious, so I don't consider myself a high value man. And you have a lot of money. Yes. Yes, and I'm going to save it, which is why a $300 date ain't never happening. Because what am I paying for, actually? Uh -huh. If I'm at wit's end and I need help, and I'm with you and you need a $300 date, can she save me? Can she help me? Uh -huh. Is she an asset or is she a liability? Because anybody need a $300 date off rip is nothing but a liability. Uh -huh. I mean, it is. It's called a spade a spade. I'm with you. The women that want $300 dates, there are men out there that are going to continue to take them on. That's why the women can always say, I'm not doing nothing but $300 a date. Because there are men that will spend $300 to reach their end goal. We know the end goal is... What is a good amount of money? Now, he made a good point. Women, you are coming to men as liabilities, not as an asset. You understand what I'm saying? When we see you, we know we got to dig into our checking account, our savings account. Hell, we got to look at our credit score first or something like that. You ain't nothing but a dang liability to us. And yes, there are men who will spend that money. These are the other type of simps. They'll spend that money just to sleep with you, to speed up the process, and then to get rid of you. So now you got another body on your tail. Now I'm gonna play this other clip, which is kind of crazy, but let's go. The couple was out to dinner on their third date. The girl wanted ranch dressing for her meal because yeah. she likes ranch. Yeah. The restaurant didn't have any. So what did she do? She left the restaurant to go buy some ranch at a nearby convenience store. Well, her date apparently found her actions off-putting and never asked her out again. Wow. Exactly. That is so ghetto and so trash. So if you go to a restaurant with a date and they don't have a certain thing, ranch dressing, you leave, leave your man inside the restaurant to go to the nearest gas station to go pick up a high-ass bottle of um, ranch dressing, bring it back to the restaurant so you can have ranch dressing so you can eat with your food. That is trashy. That is not classy. I would have stopped calling you too. That's ghetto behavior. If they don't have what you have, they simply don't have what you want. That's, that's what it is. We go someplace else. It ain't the end of the world. I can only imagine how awkward that man felt when he saw his date get up to go across the dam to 7-Eleven to get some damn ranch dressing at the gas station. Again, women, you are making yourselves into liabilities, not assets. Embarrassing. Now, let me go ahead and get to the meat of this. I want you to hear this woman right here. She said some of the most dumbest stuff on her. I saved her for last. Let's get to it. So one of my rules is I don't do coffee or drink dates. Now, I understand that some women like this or prefer this because it's a quick turnaround, 30 to 45 minutes. If you don't like him, you can get out of there. It works for some people. If you like it, I love it. This video is not for you, keep scrolling. However, for me, as for me and my household, we're going to have higher standards. I'm talking to this guy and I'm gonna read it to you because we've been talking for a couple days and he started talking about meeting up. So he said, we should get together over some pear and lychee cocktails soon. And I said, that's really sweet, but I prefer dinner. I like to get dressed up. Now I always try to say it nicely because I don't wanna be like, I don't accept drink dates. Like you don't have to be mean. You don't have to be, you can, you can be nice about it. But let's just say I prefer dinner because I like to get dressed up. And he said, I see, what type of places do you have in mind? So I sent him a list of places that I've been like wanting to try. Okay. I'm going to tell you something like this. I only, I, I'm going to give y'all some of the stuff I shared during life coaching because I see this type of um, behavior a lot. Let me tell you something. Never ask a woman where she wants to go to eat at. The reason why you don't do that is because you're giving her too much power. She will pick out the most expensive restaurants there is on the planet, expecting you to take her there and to pay for it. And like a dummy, you're going to have to do it because, or leave her alone totally because you gave her the power. You never ask a woman where she wants to eat at. What you do is this. You ask her what she likes to eat. That puts you in the position of power of picking restaurants that is within your budget to take her there to enjoy the meal. Don't ask her where she want to eat. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to y'all? You put yourself in financial binds doing that. You only ask the woman what she likes to eat, not where she wants to eat, especially if it's on a first, second, third date as you get to know her. This gave you something I normally give in life coaching. There you go. All sorts of different budgets, okay? It ranges from like medium to a little bit higher, all different locations around the city so he can choose like what works for him, you know, timing and budget wise. So I sent the list of places. He says, 
These places sound really nice. I think it'll be fun to get to know each other over some nicer dining options. Here it comes though. But I wanted to let you know up front that if we were to meet at one of those places, I'm comfortable splitting the check. I usually will do drinks or something on the simpler end for the first meetup to see if there's a connection first. I do the same thing. The whole purpose for me, in a way, I'm going to speak for myself. If I take you on a drinking date or a coffee date, for me, it ain't really just about the budget. It's about to see how you behave. I want to know if you're going to be a loud person because the places that you want to go, this is more game for my life coaching, gentlemen, from what I'm saying. That's why I do that type of date. But the places that most women want to go cost a lot of money. But there's a certain decorum, a certain behavior, a certain way that you should dress in these certain restaurants to make you look good you don't want to take dress up real nice gentlemen take a loud mouth heathen heathen out there you're gonna get embarrassed or escorted out or kicked out so i take women on low budget days to see if i want to have a second or a third and that's why I, i'll tell you more later so my thing is i don't like the coffee or drink day because they're trying to audition you to see if you are worth an actual dinner. This is the thing for me, like I know men, the number one thing men are judging you off of is your looks, right? When they when they see you, they meet you, they're gonna be like, okay, how beautiful is she? Is she put together? Do I find her attractive, right? That's the number one thing. Your personality may come second, sure, but the first thing is how you look, right? So with that in mind, my NARS, radiant creamy concealer costs $32 okay why would I put on a full face of expensive makeup do my hair make sure my nails are done make sure there's no hair on my body and then come and spend two hours of my time talking to you for an I'm sorry but ain't that what you supposed to do every day look nice you ain't doing me no favor because you put on some makeup, shave all the pubic hair off your body, got your hair did, got your nails did, because I'm asking you, was you never going to do that if we didn't meet? That's what you do anyway. Even if you're going out with your girls, that's what you do. So don't put that on the gentleman. Do you see the ignorance and the delusion of today's modern day women? That doesn't make any sense. An $8 coffee or a $16 cocktail be oh so for real let's take it even deeper when women go out with a man that they do not know they take a huge risk men are crazy okay do you watch the news like one in five men are violent he could unalive you he could r-a-p-e you he could shock you he could harass you if he feels like it. he could shock you all right let me go ahead and get in this thing look you say men are crazy and that women take risks going out with a man on a date right for one that don't make any sense because most men take you out in public on a public date you fool that's one for second for number two what about you what if you have baby daddies that we don't know nothing about or you might have told us about your baby daddy what if he's crazy as hell and don't want to see his baby mama out with another man there are stories of men getting as you say unalive by other women baby daddies because their baby daddies then won't their baby mamas with another man so where are you pulling this out of your booty from these ain't nothing but excuses to tell a man to encourage him to be a simp to be a sucker to dive deep within his pockets way down in the jungle deep <laughs> of his pockets and spend all his money on her they ain't nothing but some musty back helpers man get like it is very dangerous, extremely dangerous. When you go out with a man, you have to share your location with your mom and your friend. You have to send a screen recording of his hinge profile and the conversation that you guys had so that if you go missing, they have context. You have to text your friend every half an hour while you're with him to let her know that you haven't been beheaded. You have to take an Uber so that he doesn't know what kind of car you have and just in case he's crazy. And then when you only one the only one who sounds crazy on this video is her she's the only one who sounds crazy to me no woman that i ever met do all that i know about um they may, i've seen women take a picture of a license plate or they want to let their girls know they made it safely but all this that she's saying she's paranoid she don't need to date nobody 
She got some kind of issues going on with her. If she is so terrified of men, she shouldn't be dating men, period. That's just too much. A woman like this, you will never be happy because this is what you call a nitpicker. She's going to pick at everything, every little detail, drive your ass nuts, make you do this, make you do that, prove to me that you mean this to me, all this crazy stuff, man. get home, you have to text somebody to tell them that you made it home alive. Men aren't doing that. They don't have to worry when they meet a woman that they do not know that their lives will be in danger. Quite oh, the shit. contrary, men benefit from just being seen with you in public, okay? If you are beautiful, poised, well-dressed, it reflects well on him. People look at him and you and they think, oh, wow. That's a freaking lie. That's a hell of a lie. I'm going to tell you something. A man can be dressed up looking nice anyway and people are still going to say, oh wow, with or without you. I can go somewhere right now, throw on my Versace shades and put on my Shelby boots and Chelsea boots and do all this stuff and I can show up and shut down the show. I can show up and showcase. I don't have to have a woman for that. This woman is egotistical and she's not all that. She's okay, but she's not no damn dime. Man, who, who raised you women? Who taught you this shit? He must be the man. Ooh, he probably has money. You know what? He's probably a good guy if he can pull her. And this is especially so if you are more attractive than him. If he's fugly or he's overweight or he's short, they're like, oh, yeah, he must have money in order to be able to pull a baddie like that. So my thing is, like, what's in it for women? We've already spent more money than you by just putting our makeup on. We're in danger. Like, what's in it for us? So then all of that, plus this man is a pharmacist, okay? You mean to tell me you make upwards of $150,000 per year, but you can't take me to $120 to maybe $200 dinner? That's because you don't worth, you're not worth it. All right, if a man make $100,000 $150,000 a year as a, a pharmacist, he's not an ignorant dude. This dude is smart in some way. If he's talking to you and he don't feel the vibe that he should go ahead and spend this outrageous amount of money on you, he sees something in you and another reason why he want to take you on a cheap date if he makes that kind of money because he don't want you to take advantage of the fact that he makes money he probably have dealt with a whole lot of other gold digging women who try to use him and the way that you're talking right now in your clip would make me think that he also feels that you're a gold digger right now right now you already showing to the world that you would not be appreciative for the kind gestures that a man would show to you just the fact that a man want to take you someplace, period, and make and he makes money, wants to dress nice, want to get to know you, really genuinely wants to get to know you, and you are dismissive of that, lets me know that you ain't shit. And I hope this man didn't take you on no date, because you don't deserve a man like that. Two drinks, an appetizer, two entrees, and a dessert. Like, <laughs> and that kind of thing, look, look men are supposed to be on their like best behavior when they're doing a first interaction with a woman like that is when they are at their absolute best so if he's being cheap now for a first interaction he's gonna be cheap on your birthday he's gonna be cheap on christmas like that kind of thing that only gets worse it never gets better that is the type of man that's going to want you to work full time pay half the rent when you guys move in together, do the majority of the housework because he doesn't want to hire a housekeeper. Um, raise so in other words, this woman doesn't want responsibility or accountability. She does not want to be responsible for doing things. That are raising the kid, you can go to work if you want to. And I encourage all men to get into a position where in life, if they want to, though I know it's hard, to be in a position that if you do choose to take up a wife that she doesn't have to work unless she wants to so you can be the full provider in the house that way you have more power in the relationship i encourage every man like that but if you're not you know what i'm saying it is what it is but this woman right here is just irresponsible and want to be pampered of man that's going to want you to work full time pay half the rent when you guys move in together do the majority of the housework because he doesn't want to hire a housekeeper um, raise the kids um, plan most of the things and then after you do your 16 hour shift of labor he's going to want you to be happy and sexy for him for his pleasure that night like that's the kind of life you're looking at so you know what good for this man for asserting his boundary he did it very nicely and 
it showed me what his like attitude or approach is when it comes to dating new women and ultimately it gave me the opportunities to choose and I have my boundaries too so I chose to not accept it and so I did and you probably missed out on a good man you know how many men make over one hundred thousand dollars a year I think it's in the top three percent or top six percent so the likelihood of you finding another man that makes at least $150,000 a year is slim to none. So you ain't, you think you won, but you really lost. You think that because you got a man that you could not control, because that's all that was. She wanted to tell him what to do, how to do it, when to do it. Because that's what she's doing here. Telling him, no. Telling him, we go here. Telling him to spend this much money. This type of woman, another 15 years, 20 years. She's going to be the same type of woman who's going to date a man that makes below $30,000 or an average um, making man, which is like a little about $50,000 a year, if she gets that. You get what I'm saying? She probably pissed away her lottery ticket right there because she wasn't humble. And it showed me what his like attitude or approach is when it comes to dating new women. And ultimately, it gave me the opportunities to choose. And... I have my boundaries too, so I chose to not accept it. And so I didn't I didn't respond or anything. I didn't like bargain with him or try to justify anything. I just quietly unmatched him because I wasn't gonna let him play in my face. But like obviously if you're on TikTok, like this is not irregular discourse. Like this is very popular. Like the red pill podcast men are always talking about like all of these things. So like it's not uncommon. Like men are trying to get away with this these days. They're trying to see what they can do they're trying to get at you for less than twenty dollars okay so the pharmacist tried to give me a coffee date on a friday saturday a surgeon took me to a beautiful dinner with a view the next day after that this other man took me to this food event where the tickets were 250 dollars now let me say this if she isn't capping first let me say this first you did that pharmacist a favor by unmatching him so he can go and find him a better woman now, these other new men that she's talking about, a surgeon and another person took her to a great place with a great view, spent $250 on a plate. I want you to remember this. Nan, one of those, I'm speaking country. I said Nan. What I mean is none of those men are vetting her for marriage. None of those men propose to her to get married. Some men spend extra money to speed up the process to get in your panties, lady. You can take most women today right now and spend a thousand dollars on that woman. Take out and spend a thousand dollars out here. And most of the women who would never give it up to a man who only spend forty dollars, fifty dollars, sixty dollars on her for a date would give it up for a thousand dollars because they want to want you to keep giving them money. So, lady, just because you gave up some coochie because a man spent two hundred and fifty dollars, that just means that you are a prostitute that gives it up for two hundred and fifty dollars. That ain't nothing special because he wanted us to have VIP. So don't feel scarce about it because there are plenty of men, there are a plethora of men that would be more than happy to show you a good time. So never settle, um, date until you find the best man for the job and you got this. That's my TED talk for the day, you didn't ask. There it is. This lady said date until you find the perfect man. You this this is one of those type of women that would be forever single, the forever girlfriend, the forever side chick, the forever I'm gonna find my Boaz, the forever I'm gonna find the right man, because her standards are too high. They are very they are too unreasonable for an average man, and for men who are not average, there are men who are not average who are well above average who wouldn't deal with this either. So this woman gonna be single for a long time. I can see her having a string of different relationships that don't work out, personally. This is why I say, in my most humble opinion, in this educational video, that black women have ruined the dating scene. They have ruined dating for black men. Anyway, you let me know what you think about this. Talk to you later.